Hello, children. How are you all? Rajita is back again with something interesting and something very loving which you will love to know. And what is that? Do you want to know what is that? So again, it's with Archie series by Heaven's Publishing House. And uh, the chapter is Shoka, the Beloved of God. It's chapter 11, class 5. So when, in this lesson, what we'll learn, we'll learn about Emperor Ashoka, who was beloved of God, how he was beloved of God, Let's see in this lesson. Okay. This is again a warming up style. We have to identify the famous rulers of ancient India and write their name. So, something has to come from you also. So, you all just find out. Search. Who are they from ancient India? They are the rulers. They were the rulers. So, this again goes to you. You all find out and write down their name. Let's move ahead to the lesson. Now, this lesson, this chapter tells you about Emperor Ashoka, who was the third emperor of Mauryan dynasty. There was a dynasty called Mauryan dynasty and Emperor Ashoka was the third emperor of this dynasty. And who was he? He was the grandson of Chandragupta Maurya, who was the founder of Mauryan dynasty. Chandragupta Maurya was the founder of Mauryan dynasty and Ashoka was his grandson. So, here we'll read about Ashoka in a form of letter. A letter is written by somebody Someone has written a letter to somebody to give the information about Emperor Ashoka. Let's see how. Ashoka was the third king of the Mauryan dynasty. His grandfather Chandragupta Maurya founded the empire in the 4th century BC. So, as I told you earlier, he, uh, Ashoka was the grandson of Chandragupta Maurya. When Alexander the Great, the Greek conqueror, there was a Greek conqueror, Alexander the Great, who turned back to return to his country, Chandragupta defeated his Greek governor and extended his empire far beyond modern times. Alexander the Great, when he was going back to his country, what did Ashoka do? Ashoka just conquered that Greek. He conquered. And Chandragupta defeated his Greek governor and extended his empire far beyond modern Afghanistan. So what did Chandragupta do? Chandragupta conquered the Greek empire, Greek governors, and he extended his empire till Afghanistan. Now, Ashoka's father, Bindusara. Who was Ashoka's father? Chandragupta was the grandfather, and father's name was Bindusara. Ashoka's father was Bindusara. He ruled the vast empire for about 25 years, and Ashoka took the throne in 268 BC, and inherited the empire. After Bindusara, what happened? Ashoka took the throne. He got the throne from his father and he extended his empire. He started ruling. This letter about Ashoka's greatness is written by an elder sister to her brother who was asking about the same for his project. Brother sisters are there and the brother wants to know about Ashoka. He has got some project to do regarding Ashoka. He has to write about 
Emperor Ashoka. So he asked his uh, sister to give something, tell something about Ashoka. So she writes a letter to her brother. And what's there in this letter? Uh, she puts the address here, 358 Joyce Hostel, 27th October. The date is 27th October. She has written. Her brother's name is Park. Dear Park, I am writing a letter telling you about Ashoka. Now she is giving the information about Ashoka. The beloved of God. Ashoka was called the beloved of God. God loved him. That will help you a lot for your project because he wanted some information about his for his project. So she is writing. In Ashoka's time, the Buddhism was a young and energetic religion. So during Ashoka's time, when Ashoka was ruling, Buddhism was there. People followed Buddhism very religious. It said that as a young man, Ashoka was very cruel. Very cruel means he used to fight a lot. He used to uh, conquer all the whatever dynasties. They, he, he got whatever, uh, like wars were there. Many wars were there during Ashoka's time. He got angry very easily. He was so rude, so cruel and he got angry very easily. And ordered many killings in fits of anger. When he was angry, he ordered to kill people. At the same time, there were strong Buddhist influences working on him. But at the same time, what happened? There were people around him who were following Buddhism. And that influenced him. That was also influencing him. But his anger was also there. His wife, the daughter of a merchant of Vidisha, his wife was the daughter of merchant of Vidisha, was a firm believer in Buddha's principles. Lord Buddha gave so many principles and principle of love and peace. So she followed the principle of love and peace. Many a time she made him promise that he would not use voice. Ashoka's wife many a time take, took promises that you will not fight, you will not go for a war, you will not kill people. But in spite of these promises, Ashoka continued to kill and fight wars. In spite of giving promises to his wife, he continued with the wars, he continued to fight. Another great influence was of his young nephew. He had a young nephew, Nigarodha, who was his brother Sumana's son. Ashoka had a brother Sumana and Nigarodha was Sumana's son. It is believed that Ashoka got his brother killed in order to become the king himself. Now look at the cruelty of Ashoka. Ashoka got killed his brother Sumana also because he wanted to rule. Shoka wanted to sit on the throne. He wanted to become the king. So he got his brother killed. He thought Nigrodha must hate him and Nigrodha was Sumana's son. So he thought that I have killed Sumana so Nigrodha would hate me. He would not never like me. But little Nigrodha had become a Buddhist monk at a very young age. He had followed Buddhism at a very young age, Nigrodha. And had no bitterness or hatred in his heart against Ashoka. He didn't hate Ashoka. He didn't have any bitterness in his heart for Ashoka. Because he had started following Buddhism. Which, uh, which teaches us love and peace. The boy's nobility and forgiveness touched Ashoka's heart. When he saw that this little boy, I have killed his father, then also this boy is not hating me. He loves me so much. From then he started changing. This forgiveness touched Ashoka's heart and lot. The turning point in Ashoka's life came when the Kalinga war, when the Kalinga war, there was a place called Kalinga and there there was a war, Kalinga war. So from there he changed. How he changed? Ashoka wanted to extend his empire to east and 
trout and therefore attacked Kalinga. So, as we are reading from starting that Ashoka wanted to extend his empire. That's why he killed people. He had wars. He used to fight. And here also he wanted to extend his empire. So, he attacked Kalinga. Modern Odisha. Nowadays, it is called Kalinga was, then it was named Kane Kalinga. Now it is called Odisha. Like all wars, it ended in huge loss of life. Like in every war it happens. When a war is fought, people are killed. So here also many people were killed. There was huge loss of life. 100,000 people were killed. 150,000 made prisoners and many more suffered. So, so many people were killed. So many were making, and so many were there and made prisoners. They were made prisoners. The horror of such destruction filled Ashoka's heart with deep sorrow. Now, when he saw this destruction, the people all over the line, they are dead. That many people have been made prisoners. When he went to the war place and saw this destruction, then his heart went in deep sorrow. He was very, very sad. He was responsible for so many such deaths. Now then he realized that in each and every war, people lose their life. And I am responsible for all these things. He vowed not to take any more life. There he promised himself not to take any more life, not to fight. He wants to work to bring happiness and peace. He became a Buddhist and set about spreading his message with great enthusiasm. Now there he turned to a Buddhist. He started following Buddhism and started spreading messages of love and peace with great enthusiasm. Ashoka appointed officials to see that his message reached the people. Now he appointed many officials to see that they carry their, his messages to different places. He got his messages carved on huge rocks and pillars. There were huge big, big rocks and long pillars. He got those messages carved on those pillars and rocks. These rocks and pillars were installed all over the kingdom. These rocks and pillars, they were installed all over the kingdom of Ashoka. So that the people can read them. People can go through them. In the areas where backward tribes lived. Where the backward trash people who didn't have much facility, there he got and installed these pillars and rocks. And in the borders of his kingdom. The rock edicts and Ashoka pillars can be seen even today. Even today there the rock and those Ashoka pillars are there. His workers and craftsmen gave the stone glass like polish which shines even today. The stones were given such a polish that they shine like glass even today. His workers and some of Ashoka's messages are. Now, these are some of the messages which Ashoka gave to the people after he started following Buddhism. We should respect our parents, teachers and elders. This was the first message. We should be kind to animals. No killing of animals. We should speak the truth. Always speak the truth. No living creature should be killed. No killing of any any living creature. Not only animals, but any living creature, even human beings. People should be generous in giving charity. If people are having so much of money, they should charity. They should give it to the poor. Such messages make Ashoka's dhamma or dharma. The sage people 
how to bring happiness to all living creatures because Buddhism teaches love and peace. These messages are in Ashoka's own words. So these messages which we read right now, those messages are in Ashoka's own words. He himself spoke them. Ashoka took many steps to spread Buddhism. He sent his son Mahindra and daughter Sangamitra to Sri Lanka. His son's name was Mahindra and daughter's name was Sangamitra. He sent both of them to Sri Lanka. On the request of Devam Priyatissa, king of Sri Lanka. The king of Sri Lanka, he requested, he sent a branch of Bodhi tree to that country where it was planted with great reverence. Bodhi tree was there in Shoka's kingdom. The king of Sri Lanka, Devam Priya, he requested to send a branch of that tree so Ashoka sent the branch of Bodhi tree to Sri Lanka and there it was planted with great respect. His religious ambassadors travelled all over his empire and beyond. It was largely due to his efforts that Buddhism spread to distant countries like Ceylon, Burma, Thailand, China, Japan and Central Asia. These were the countries where the teachings of Shoka, the teachings of Buddhism, they were spread. And it was all the effort of Emperor Ashoka. Ashoka's title was Devana, Devanam Priya or Beloved of God. Ashoka was given a title Devanam Priya. Devanam Priya means Devo, Dev, Beloved. Dev means God, God's Beloved. He ruled for almost 40 years. Ashoka, the Emperor Ashoka ruled for 40 years, almost 40 years. The effect of his teachings can be seen in Indian way of life even today. The government of India has adopted our national emblem from Ashoka's pillar. There's Ashoka's pillar from when the government of India has adopted our national emblem. Emblem. The V or the chakra in our flag and the four lines sitting back to back are from the top of Ashoka's pillar at Sarnath. Ashoka's pillar is at Sarnath. There we can see four lines sitting back to back. So that is and the chakra in our flag, in our Indian flag, the chakra which is in between. These both have been taken from Shoka's pillar at Sama, which Shoka got erected to honor the place where Lord Buddha preached his first Sarnath. Sarnath, uh, Buddha, Lord Buddha has preached his first sermon. So to respect Lord Buddha, he got this erected in Sarna. He got the pillar erected in Sarna. Hope you have a lot for the project. Now, the sister says, hope you have a lot for the project. I have given you so many information about Lord Emperor Ashoka. So, your loving sister, Lord. she ends the message here. Now, what lesson teacher? The teachings of Buddhism. This teaches the victory, glory, greatness achieved. Non-violence has never given anything to anybody. Sorry, violence has not given anything to anybody. Non-violence is the key to that. Non-violence, through non-violence we can get many things. We can get love of people. We can therefore in a core of essential life, we can uh, get satisfaction. Our self-satisfaction we can get it if we follow non-violence. Because through violence, what happens? People lose their lives. There is war all around. So, track that to the true meaning of life in Buddha's teaching. Now, a life that is simple and full of human virtues was better than a life of greatness attended by 
forsaking this virtue, taking each other's life, never gives you respect. How do you earn respect? When you love others. So, you should love others, be in peace, live in peace and let others also live in peace. So, you all must have known till now about Emperor Ashoka. We have got many information in that letter about Emperor Ashoka. So, let's see how much we know. Take the correct answer. Who was the grandfather of Ashoka? Who was the grandfather of Ashoka? Chandragup Maurya. Chandragupta was the grandfather of Ashoka. Which country did Alexander belong to? Alexander the Great belonged to Greece. Who was the name of Ashoka's brother whom he killed? He killed his brother to get the throne and his brother's name was Kumana. The turning point in Ashoka's life came with the war, dash war. Which war was it? From where Ashoka turned? It was the war of Kalinga. The Kalinga war. Okay? Chandragupta defeated his dash and extended his empire far beyond modern Afghanistan. Whom did Chandragupta defeat? He killed his own governor, the Greek governor. Defeated his Greek governor. That was a young and energetic religion. Which religion was at that time during Ashoka? Which religion was on the top? The Buddhism was very young. Ashoka continued to dash and dash war. Ashoka didn't stop. He continued to kill and fight war. Nigrodha's dash and dash touched Shoka's heart. Nigrodha's love and affection. Because he didn't hate Ashoka, he loved and affection he showed. Touched Ashoka's heart. Ashoka became a dash and set about spreading his message with great dash. What did Ashoka become after that Kalinga war? He became a Buddhist. And set up spreading his message with a great enthusiasm. Now, let's see. These are some of the names. What are the relations between them? Ashoka. What was Ashoka? The third king of the Mauryan dynasty. So, here we go. Ashoka. The third king of the Mauryan dynasty. Chandragupta Maurya. Who was Chandragupta Maurya? What was the relation of Chandragupta Maurya with Ashoka? Chandragupta Maurya was the grandfather of Ashoka. Ashoka's grandfather. Bindusara. What was the name of Ashoka's father? Ashoka's father's name was Bindusara. So Bindusara was Ashoka's father. 
Sumana. Who was Sumana? Sumana was Ashoka's brother. The daughter of a merchant of Vidisha. Who was the daughter of a merchant of Vidisha? Ashoka's wife. Ashoka's wife. Nigrodha. Nigrodha was Sumana's And Ashoka's nephew. So we are seeing the relation with Ashoka. Na? So Negrodha was Ashoka's nephew. Yes. Mahindra. Ashoka's son's name was Mahindra. And Sangamitra was Ashoka's daughter. Here we come with the question answer. Let's see more, how much more we remember about Ashoka. Who was Ashoka? The third emperor of Mauryan dynasty. Third emperor. of Mauryan dynasty. Name the countries where Buddhism spread. There were many more countries where Buddhism spread. Few were Ceylon, then Burma, Japan, China, Ashoka fared as a young man. As a young man, Ashoka was very cruel. Ashoka was very cruel. Very cruel. How did he spread his message? Explain. So, he, how he spread his message? He appointed few officials to, so that they can go and spread the messages. He got crafted on the stones and pillars of messages so that people are able to read. People who are, who are living in the remote areas, there he, uh, there he got crafted on the stones and the pillars. He made them, he sent the stones and pillars there in the remote areas to sit there so that the people are aware of those messages. What were Ashoka's messages? Now, we have read the lesson very well. There are five teachings of Ashoka, the messages which Ashoka gave. Respect your parents. Don't kill any living being. There are five messages. Find out those messages and write down. Answer the following questions with reference to the given line. He was responsible for so many such deaths. This is the line. Who is considered as he here? None other than Emperor Vishwaka. Now, what was he responsible for? As he used to fight, he used to go for wars. What was he responsible for? He was responsible for so many deaths which occurred during the war. Why did he do so? Because he was a very angry person. 
he was a very cruel person. He wanted to expand his empire all over. He wanted to rule all over. So that's why he used to have so many wars, so many fights. And that was the reason he was responsible for all the deaths which occurred. What did he realize then? Now, when the Kalinga war was there, it is all about Kalinga war. He realized when he saw so many deaths, so many people lying in the war place, he realized that I am only the responsible person for all these deaths, for all the people who have died, for all the people who are in the prison. I am the responsible person for all this. What did he do then? He changed, his, his heart changed and he adopted Buddhism. He adopted what? Buddhism. He adopted the teachings of Buddhism. He became a Buddhist and he started spreading the messages of love, peace. Why according to you he is known as great? He is no see this this question will can have different answers. Why he was great? He was great because he was so cruel he couldn't have stopped the wars and the fights which he did. But when he realized, when he realized all those things, he stopped everything and he got to the path of peace. He adopted the path of peace. And moreover, he, not only he himself took the path of peace, he got the, he spread the message all over different, different countries so that the people also adopt all this, these messages. They also adopt the path of love and peace. That's why he is called Ashoka the Great. Because along with him, he changed so many lives. So, in this lesson, we came to know about Emperor Ashoka or Ashoka the Great. So, people, what is the learning in this? In this lesson, we learn that whatever good we do, we should spread that everyone. We should not keep it till uh, us only. The good things should always go to the people all around us. And yes, we don't want to be great. We don't, uh, we don't to be, want to be called great. But yes, the things, the good things should always be spread all over and we should always follow the path of love and peace. We should never be cruel to anybody. We should always love and respect everyone. This is the teaching which we got from this lesson. So, we end here. Thank you so much. I'll be back again. Bye.